Hi, welcome back! In this video, I'm going to introduce the idea of the definite integral and give you the formal definition as well as some more casual ideas that you need to know when using the definite integral. So we use the definite integral to find the exact area under a curve, and specifically what we're doing is we're taking an infinite amount of rectangles. So rather than having a set finite number of rectangles like we do with Riemann sums, we're going to send the number of rectangles to infinity. So as we have more rectangles, the approximation becomes an exact value for the area under the curve because we are filling in all the way all of that space. I've drawn here just a little picture to remind you how the rectangles look when we're using Riemann sums to fill in that area between an interval A to B. And actually when we do this, we really still do have a Riemann sum, it's just that now we have an infinite number of those rectangles rather than a finite number. So in the Riemann sum, we use n to represent the number of rectangles, and so we're sending n to infinity using a limit. Okay, so for the formal definition of a definite integral, we say that the definite integral, which is the precise area under the curve of a function f of x, f of x is the curve we're looking at, on a specific interval from a to b is given by the following. We take the limit as n approaches infinity of the Riemann sum. So of the sum from i equals one to n of f of x sub i times delta x. So here we're using all of the Riemann sums sort of in this one formula. Once we send n to infinity, it doesn't matter if we take the left or the right or the midpoint, they all effectively become the same thing. And so we say that the limit of this Riemann sum where we're taking an infinite number of triangles, is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So let me unpack the pieces of that and we can make sure we understand what the symbols mean and what the words are that we use to describe them. So the s looking symbol, the sort of elongated s, is the integral symbol. And this represents the sum portion of the Riemann sum. So when we have the integral, it's saying we're summing up a bunch of things and we're summing up everything from a to b. a to b are our bounds of integration. So this tells us the interval that we're working on. We're summing everything from a up to b. Then the f of x is the integrand, and it represents whatever is being integrated. So we're gonna see other things that aren't just f of x in that position, but for the definition of definite integral, that's what goes as the integrand is the f of x. And when we say whatever is being integrated, we're using the verb integrating or to integrate, and it just means to find the integral of. We'll be using that a lot. I consider it the comparison to like doing the derivative, which is differentiating. This is integrating, taking the integral of. And the f of x corresponds to the f of x sub i's in the Riemann sum. So basically we're taking the function values, the outputs of the function, because those are the heights of each rectangle. So this is the same for both the Riemann sum and then how we write it as a definite integral. Then the dx is called an infinitesimal, and so it just represents an infinitely small change in x. As we take an infinite number of rectangles, the width of each rectangle becomes infinitely small. So the delta x becomes a new thing that we're calling a dx, an infinitesimal. It just means it has an infinitely small width for that rectangle. So here, the dx corresponds to the delta x in the Riemann sum. Okay, so the definite integral gives us these precise or the exact area between the curve and the horizontal axis. So the Riemann sum with a finite number of rectangles could only approximate that area for us, and we wanna do better. We wanna make some math that will help us find the exact area. And the definite integral is the way we are going to do that. So for now, we're just learning the notation and learning the basic idea of how that integral symbol and that integral altogether represents the area under the curve. So let's try an example where we look at how this works. Okay, so let's say that I am going to give you a graph and then we wanna find the integral from zero to seven of f of x dx. So let me draw the graph for you. I'm just gonna draw some shapes with some different areas here. Let's say the first area, the one I'm drawing here in green is four. Then the area in the middle, let's say that area is three, the gray area. And then the last area, the pink one, let's say that area is one. And again, this line that I've drawn is the curve f of x. 
and we want to find the integral from 0 to 7. Okay, so remember that this integral, the new definite integral that we just defined, represents the total area under the curve between 0 and 7. So here I've only drawn the graph from 0 to 7, so we're looking at the whole thing that we have drawn here. So the total area is going to be the sum of each of these areas. So I'm going to have area 1 plus area 2 plus area 3. Basically the green plus the gray plus the pink areas. Then if you remember from when we have talked about velocity, when areas are underneath the horizontal axis, they're actually negative. So we're considering the area 2 to be a negative. So I'll change the label here and actually say the area is negative 3. So sometimes we don't label them as negative, but we just assume that the ones below the x-axis are negative areas. There are other ways to interpret it, but that's basically the standard way to do it when we're going from the left to the right on the graph. So we're taking the sum of the areas. I'm going to do 4 plus a negative 3 plus 1. So I'm getting 2 as my final area. So the integral from 0 to 7 of this function is 2. Okay, so this is the basic idea of a definite integral, but let's summarize some notes about it just to take forward with us as we leave this video. First off, just remember that the areas that are below the horizontal axis are negative, so you might need to use negative values for those if they aren't listed that way initially. Then, as you noticed in the problem that we did, we got 2 as our final answer. So when we do a definite integral, just like when we did a Riemann sum, our solution should be a real number or a constant with no variables. So the idea is that it's finding an area under the curve. That should be a constant value. Then the last thing I want to mention is just that formally textbooks and mathematicians often say that the definite integral gives the net signed area. So net means sort of total taking signs into account. And then signed means that we are assigning the positive to be the areas on the top or above the horizontal axis, and then the areas below the horizontal axis as negative. So if you see that phrase, net signed area, just know they're talking about taking a definite integral and taking it in the way that we have talked about with the positive and negative areas. All right, that's it for this video. Just a short introduction into the definite integral where we see the symbols for the first time and start to get used to the idea of the definite integral as area under the curve. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.